important we will learn about endpoint security, what it is, and how it has evolved. Let's define what we mean by an endpoint. In the past, it was defined as any personal device used by an end user, like a desktop computer, laptop, or handheld device. Now, endpoints include the Internet of Things, or IoTs, which encompasses all sorts of gadgets, such as a smart thermostat or fridge in a home. How have we secured these endpoints, and why is endpoint security so important? Endpoints have always been an easy point of entry into a network. Why try to circumvent a firewall when through social engineering you can exploit gullible, careless users? As online connections have expanded, the number of attack vectors have multiplied on the endpoints, giving attackers more opportunities to exploit. Before networks were connected to the internet, bad actors relied on floppy disks to spread malware. An infected disk inserted into a computer would infect that computer. Later, this would include other removable storage devices, such as CDs, DVDs, and USB-connected portable drives. As you can imagine, this attack vector was quite limited in scope. The first endpoint security products were Antivirus, or AV, a software that would scan devices and your hard drive for malware. They were signature-based, meaning that the antivirus software looked for specific characteristics, fingerprints, or signatures of the virus. If it found something that had those characteristics, it could quarantine or expunge the program. All of this changed when home and business networks began to connect to the internet. Many more attack vectors became available to the cybercriminal, such as email phishing, infected websites, bring your own device, BYOD, to work, and social media. These new opportunities proliferated the growth of malware from tens of thousands per year to hundreds of thousands per day. Also, the bad actors began to exploit security loopholes in operating systems, applications like your web browser, and even relatively inert applications like an MS Word document. Compounding this problem of an expanding attack surface, the very nature of malware changed. Polymorphic malware is designed to change all by itself, mimicking viruses that mutate in the natural world. This meant that signature-based antivirus software was no longer fully effective. Along came the Endpoint Protection Platform, or EPP, which was intended to prevent file-based malware attacks and implement other preventative controls. The method focused on stopping malware before it executed and infected the endpoint. File-based malware is a file downloaded to a device, which, when opened, runs malicious code or a script. EPP provided many prevention-focused services, such as antivirus, device firewall, web filtering, data protection through encryption, and device control. Device control is a technology that provides built-in security that detects, authorizes, and secures removable storage devices. Web filtering is technology that enables network administrators to control what type of site you are permitted to visit. However, none of these techniques proved to be the ultimate remedy for endpoint infections. At the time, web filtering was thought to be the solution because it was assumed that web-borne malware came only from lewd websites. The possibility remained that malware could pose as an advertisement on a legitimate site. Given the ever-evolving complexity of attack methods and the expanding attack surface, security professionals came to realize it was impossible to prevent all malware infections. A new strategy was developed to defend the endpoint in parallel to EPP development. That new strategy is called Endpoint Detection and Response, or EDR. EDR is software used to detect, investigate, and respond to suspicious activities on endpoints. It began as a digital forensics investigation tool and provided security analysts with the threat intelligence information and tools needed to analyze an attack and to identify the Indicators of Compromise, or IOC. Analysts were then able to detect malware, some of which dwelled undetected in networks for months or years. Instead of investigating an attack to learn about its anatomy, the tool was also used to detect an ongoing attack in real time. Remediation tools were also added, which enabled analysts to request more information from endpoints, ban processes, isolate endpoints, and block specific IPs. EDR grew into a true detection and response solution, but it was not without problems. This first-generation EDR mostly used manual methods that were time-consuming and were too slow for fast-moving threats like ransomware. The lack of integration with other security software hindered its ability to respond in an effective and timely manner. 
Configuring and using EDR demanded high-level expertise and the analysis of a multitude of alerts, many of which were false positives, was time-consuming for the analysts. Vendors partly mitigated these problems by introducing a Managed Detection and Response, or MDR platform, which performed basic alert triage and notified analysts via email. Still, EDR remained too slow and too complicated to become a standard tool in the arsenal of endpoint security software. Second-generation EDR addressed these issues. It was designed to be policy-driven and automated. Through customizable playbooks, analysts can now direct EDR to remediate problems both immediately and automatically. Proactively, analysts can instruct EDR to respond in a specific way should it detect a program or script that behaves suspiciously. Malicious activities trigger automatic blocks to prevent data exfiltration, encryption, and attempts to infiltrate the network. It can stop and roll back ransomware in real time without necessarily removing the device or disrupting business continuity. Security professionals quickly realized the advantages of merging EDR and EPP technologies, and most EPP definitions now include both characteristics. A single integrated agent can prevent the majority of file-based malware at the pre-infection, pre-execution stage while detecting and responding to malware that evaded prevention at the post-infection stage. A combined EPP and EDR solution also removes integration concerns and simplifies configuration and management for analysts. EPP and EDR software now includes other preventative controls to improve security hygiene, such as alerting analysts when endpoints don't have the latest security patch or are running unsecure applications. By identifying critical vulnerabilities, security teams can mitigate threats and apply virtual patches, or create policies that apply restrictions to endpoints until a software patch is installed. In addition, machine learning ML, is now included as part of the enhanced AV capabilities, which helps detect malware at the pre-execution stage. Detection and response capabilities apply not only to endpoints, but they can now be extended across the entire security infrastructure. This is called Extended Detection and Response, or XDR. XDR implements additional AI technology to provide machine speed detection and response capabilities to secure not only endpoints, but also the network and access layer and the cloud. 